Did you see that? This video is brought to you by Squarespace. My name is Felix, welcome to What About It. SpaceX needs these weird plates like crazy. Falcon 9 scored some epic achievements again, there are loads of new insights about Artemis 1, and a simple human error destroyed a lunar lander. There is a ton of interesting new info, so stay tuned and let's dive right in. Starship Updates Another week, another Starship Update. I'm glad you're back with me to discover some fresh space news and surprising insight. Do you know what I always say? Starbase never sleeps. Some of the top talents from around the world are tirelessly working to hopefully one day send the first Starship to Mars. That would be a truly history-changing achievement. For now, reaching orbit will do, and with every day we're getting closer and closer to it. Alright, follow me, we've got some answers to find about all the crazy stuff happening in Boca Chica, Texas, and in the rest of the space industry. Would this be a why episode if I didn't mention stage zero? Now you say heck no, and then we continue. Perfect, thank you. It's one of the most complicated parts of Starbase, perhaps even more complex than the Starship itself. A huge troublemaker, and that's what makes it so interesting. The Orbital Launch Mount The OLM plays a crucial role in most Starship testing procedures. Can you name some of its functions? Exactly, it provides both power and propellant to the booster and the ship, and it acts as a secure anchor to hold the rocket in place during critical moments like static fires or seconds before the liftoff. Currently, the launch pad is causing SpaceX to grow some grey hair. It's the main bottleneck stopping them from launching another starship. But that's what we all want to see. Do you remember what Elon Musk said? If they had known what would happen during the inaugural launch, they wouldn't have pushed the button. But as fate would have it, they did launch, and now brilliant SpaceX engineers face the task of finding a solution for the insane crater they created. They literally blew it. In the previous couple of episodes, we dove deep into piles. That sounds wrong, still very important. They're supposed to improve the sturdiness of the OLM's base. Anti-crater hardware, so to say. <laughs> a few days ago, the addition of the large thick piles was concluded as the machine used for it was towed away. So are we done? Nope. Take a look at this. It's a flight auger rig. And do you know what it does? It employs a long auger to excavate the soil without the need to shake it off. Shake it off. Couldn't resist. Do you remember my lecture about sheet piling from the previous episode? Good job, you're paying attention. This story isn't over. Workers have been installing more of them to construct a watertight wall. This wall will aid in the excavation work and there's a high possibility that the recently spotted rebar will be used in the construction of… Say it with me! The pile cap! Again, super important, it'll be used as a base for the water-cooled steel plate. While we haven't seen any of the steel plates being transported from the Sanchez site to the launch pads just yet, there's a glimmer of hope on the horizon. Some piping related to the plate has been painted white. So what's that for? Right, insulation and protection. That's the final step before it's ready for the pads. Here comes the fascinating part. Mauricio from RGV Aerial Photography has spotted some new whatchamacallits. That's slang for we're working on it. Take a look. Here's something to think about. The space engineer, a top Starship whatchamacallit researcher, proposed that these pieces could be used for shielding the steel plate itself. And it does look like it fits, so double shielded. Now can you move your eyes just a tiny bit to the right? Perfect. That's the water system that will store all the liquid necessary for the steel plate. Chief captured another delivery of white high pressure tanks. They'll join the already existing stack. Looks like this whole thing will require gigantic amounts of pressure. As you can see, the new deluge system is coming together at insane speeds. Elon Musk predicted that it could be completed by the end of June, and the current progress certainly aligns with that timeline. Let's head down the road to the suborbital pads. This is the legendary place where the two important prototypes, serial number 8 and serial number 15, achieved massive milestones in 2020 and 2021. 
directly resulting in the next generation of ships, including our new love, Ship 25. Now, SpaceX made the official announcement that Ship 25 and Booster 9 will form the next dream team for the second Starship flight. Since then, the stunning team at Starbase has been working like they were some crazy workaholics. And they did it. They are basically ready for the next static fire. Did you know that although the ship is structurally sound and designed to withstand its weight without being pressurized, it still needs a crane as support? This allows engineers to perform tasks inside the ship safely. And to be able to breathe inside a metal can that's sitting in the Texan sun, the white tube serves as an air supply. Nice and comfy, or at least not deadly. No road closures or temporary flight restrictions have been announced. So you and me, we're waiting. But hey, at Starbase, everything can change in the blink of an eye. Let's take a walk. Did you know that the launch site is mostly powered by diesel generators? Expensive, stinks and bad for the environment. Now there's a reason we were taking a walk along Highway 4. See these excavators? They've been digging a trench all the way from the build site to the pads. Do you have any idea why? Here's the answer. SpaceX has finally decided to lay a three-phase electric cable to connect both sites. Dude, that took them long. Once completed, the cable will provide power to the launch site without the stink. Well done. That is, unless a piece of concrete slams into the ground, obliterating the cable, but that's for a future episode. Stay tuned. Since we were already going that way anyway, why not swing by the build site, right? It's right around the corner. Everyone follow me. And we're there. How convenient. Booster 10 was moved to the Rocket Garden, aka Starship parking lot. Next up, ship work. Ship 28 got its aft flaps. That's a huge deal, securing SpaceX's supply of fresh starships to blow up. Fantastic hobby. There's more. Ship 29's aft section is patiently waiting for a rollout, still tucked away in one of the production tents. Any day now. Two more ships in the pipeline. Perfect. At night, you can sometimes hear those starships rattling from excitement. Nah, psh, that's no fear. They are happy starships. And then there's Mega Bay. It's become quite spacious here since Booster 10 decided to take a walk. And Booster 11 is taking its sweet time. While there might be cricket sounds inside the Mega Bay, the real excitement can be found outside the base. Chief captured a rare sight, a super heavy header tank in the wild. This small tank stores oxidizer. That's liquid oxygen allowing the raptors to fire even when coming back down from space, at least at some point. Did you know that header tanks really love transfer tubes? Homework assignment. Go tell that to your neighbor and take a pic of his reaction, then tweet it and tag me. Jokes aside, we don't know which prototype will use this header tank, but you'll be the first to know if you subscribe. Just saying. Here's another good one. What are we looking at now? That four-ring barrel is the first section of Booster 12. They are already working on it, even though Booster 9, 10 and 11 aren't even finished yet. Four boosters, that's 132 Raptors, let that sink in. Talking about hardware-rich development, these people are making so many boosters that they'll need to get another Mega Bay at some point. Oh, wait. Look at that shiny second Mega Bay growing. That's progress right there. And it's getting even better at the Sanchez site. Most of the cladding is installed and many of those large support columns have already been painted as well. There goes the sweet nickname, yup, out the window, no more white bay. And now for the elephant in the room, Star Factory. Did you know that elephants are grey, not white? Alright, who put that in the script? Remember how I dramatically re-enacted on the last episode that I'd be worried if I were a low bay? Buckle up because things escalated quickly. These guys have no mercy at all. In a matter of five minutes, the sliced in half building fell down like a dead beaver. That was Starbase history right there. One of the first buildings ever to be constructed at Starbase, always changing, never sleeping. Now all that's left is a bunch of scrap metal that, of course, has to be dealt with. The ground fabrication building, on the other hand, seems to be having some luck. Instead of being completely demolished, no mercy style, it's being taken apart bit by bit and panel by panel. 
What all this shows is that there is no waiting around for SpaceX. Star Factory has to expand fast. What do you think? How long will it take until we see the first section of the Star Factory expansion? Two months? Two weeks? Five minutes? No joke, that's how it's done now. And if you're crazy in love with Starman here, buy him some flowers. Best way to do that is to become a channel member or a patron. Links are in the description. I mean, look at that cute little guy. Thank you so much for your support from the entire team. You rock. All right, remember the beginning of the episode, how I said that something truly remarkable was ahead? Well, hold on to your seat, because your best buddy Falcon 9 has just shattered some mind-boggling records. Now, I bet you're dying to know what those records are, aren't you? Good. Get in the mood. It all started with Axiom 2. May 21st, four brave astronauts are embarking on a fantastic trip to space. These tough explorers went all the way to the ISS. They had a perfect eight-day stay there with everything that comes with it. During their voyage, the gang went above and beyond to spread the importance of STEAM. No, not the STEAM you play the games with. It's an acronym. It stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Mathematics. Those are the best subjects to start with if you want to get a more profound understanding of the world around you. So STEAM is absolutely essential for problem solving and by watching What About It, there's a strong chance you're very much interested in it. Remember, they hold the key to innovation, progress and basically a universe of limitless possibilities. And our crew from Axiom2 set an example. They hosted numerous live streams answering countless questions from students across the entire world. They inspired. They also did more than 20 experiments. Allow me to share my favorite, the Jams Order Visualization. Yep, Order Visualization. This little gizmo captured the smell present on the ISS. And when it returns back to us, scientists will analyze this data to identify a similar source of odors on our planet. No beans for the astronauts, please, while the experiment was going on. Joke aside, this experiment is vital for future space stations. Some astronauts described the smell on the ISS as almost not bearable. There goes space nostalgia. Better close the door quickly. Once the hatch was sealed and some air freshener was sprayed inside Crew Dragon Freedom, they quickly departed from the station on May 30th. If that date rings a bell, welcome to the club. You're ready to be a space nerd team leader. If not, don't worry, you've got me for that. Three years ago on that day, a pioneering mission was launched from Cape Canaveral, the legendary Demo 2. It marked the first human launch from American soil since the final shuttle mission in 2011 and it was a huge deal. Do you know how many people have booked SpaceX's services since then? Let's play a game. Pause the video and give me your best guess in the comments. No cheating. Ready? Anyone with 38, welcome to the team leader rank. Here comes the next insane number recently achieved by SpaceX. May 30th. Again, see the theme? Another Starlink mission takes off from Vandenberg's Slick 4E. 51 Starlinks and two crazy records. Now what are those, dear Felix? You want to know it all, right? Number 1. 200th consecutive successful Falcon mission. Boom. The last time a Falcon experienced a failure was in 2016, when an anomaly during a propellant tanking test blew up the Amos 6 satellite and the entire pad with it. $85 million of damage only for the satellite and the launch costs. SpaceX has definitely learned from its mistakes. Seven years without a problem for Falcon 9. Here's crazy record number two. Wait, give me a second. First, we have to hear from our sponsor. Fellow space adventurers, get ready to launch into a whole new galaxy of online possibilities with Squarespace's revolutionary feature. Buckle up for the Fluid Engine, a next-gen website design system that unleashes unbreakable creativity. Customize every detail with drag and drop magic, creating stunning websites that are out of this world. Let's navigate the vast universe of analytics, uncover valuable insights to fuel your business growth, track site visits, sales and explore the most effective marketing channel. 
With this cosmic data, you can optimize your website and plot a data-driven marketing strategy that's light years ahead, based on top keywords, popular products, and captivating content. Collect subscribers, send welcome emails, announce sales, and even reward your loyal customers with exclusive discount codes. With built-in analytics, you can navigate the stars of marketing, optimizing your strategies with every cent. Go to squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, go to squarespace.com slash whataboutit to save 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, now that that's done, here's crazy record number two. If we take the Falcon Heavy launch that occurred at the beginning of May into account, then SpaceX broke the record database itself. They launched a total of nine Falcon missions within a single month. Are they even real? Two crazy milestones were achieved with a single launch. A decade ago, no one could have dreamed of such a high cadence of flights. Well, with the exception of that crazy guy who made it all happen. What was his name again? Who knows what the next decade or two will bring? Perhaps a similar flight frequency, but this time with crewed flights to the moon. Count me in. Speaking of moonshots, NASA still keeps surprising us with new Artemis 1 footage. This time the Orion capsule itself got the spotlight. The one vehicle currently in existence capable of making the trip to the moon and back with smiling astronauts upon their return. They shared some spectacular shots of the launch as Cape Tower separation. Once in space it's no longer needed, so it's ditched to save weight. Best side effect? That's the first moment for the astronauts to enjoy the view through Orion's windows after the launch. Before that, they are not seeing anything of what's going on outside. They also shared the solar panel viewpoint as they unfolded. GoPro makes it possible. The recording might appear a bit wobbly, but that's because each panel is an impressive 7 meters or 23 freedom feet long and is surprisingly flexible. Of course, no moon rocket would be complete without an epic stage separation and oh boy did SLS deliver. A feast for the eyes. How about some barbecue? Re-entry footage. That's 5000 Fahrenheit or more than 2700 degrees Celsius working its way through Orion's ablative heat shield. While you and I are eagerly waiting for another lunar mission, Japan's Hakuto-R moon lander shows once again how hard all this actually is. You won't believe what caused the recent crash. December 2022. Hakuto-R embarks on a difficult journey. Covering approximately 1.4 million kilometers or 870,000 miles to become the first private spacecraft to touch down on the moon's surface. At least that's the plan. Five months fast forward, the White Rabbit successfully reaches its destination, the moon. Up to this point everything is going perfectly, however that's about to change. During the descent the signal from the lander is suddenly lost. Despite best efforts to re-establish communication, Hakutu R stays silent. Several days later, the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter, a NASA satellite designed to photograph the moon's surface, captures images of the remains. Hakuto R is no more. This heartbreaking evidence confirms that the lander has crashed into the moon. All is lost. Initial investigations reveal that the probe ran out of fuel, but the true cause behind it is yet to be revealed. Until now, brace for impact. During the development process, the software controlling the descent module underwent simulations for potential landing sites. Based on these simulations, it appeared that the software was functioning correctly, giving the engineers a green light to proceed with the real action. Now here it comes. At some point, the landing site was changed to an area on the moon known as the Atlas Crater. To orient itself in space, the spacecraft relies on countless sensors including radar, cameras and altimeters. As the lander flew past the rim of the Atlas crater, the altimeter registered a significant dip in ground elevation. When the onboard computer received this data and compared it with the simulations, it became terribly confused. It concluded that the altimeter must have been faulty, so it ignored it. Turns out that no one of the engineers had actually changed the landing site in the code. The lander had no clue and was extremely unprepared for a crater. Without altitude readings, Hakuto R now had to rely on estimates to determine its height above the lunar surface. 
Rule of thumb plus moon landing equals bad idea. Hakuto R technically landed perfectly. Just 5 kilometers or 3 miles above the ground. Kind of like the sudden feeling of missing that last step on the stairs. While the loss of a multi-million dollar lander due to a software bug is definitely hard to swallow, most of its tasks were completed. The design certainly worked, so there is minimal impact on future missions scheduled for 2024 and 2025. iSpace, we cross our fingers for you. That's it for today. Remember to like and subscribe. Check out this epic new shirt in your favorite Space Nerd store on the net. Link is in the description or click one of those funny looking guys wearing our designs right under the video. 420 all the way, epic stuff. And if you want to get even smarter about space and rockets, watch this video next to continue your journey. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you again in the next episode. The p the p the, not the. <laughs> Super important. And then, <laughs> as support. <laughs>